Uh, imagine you're having a lovely family dinner at a local restaurant. The food is fantastic and your entire family enjoys being out of the house. Relaxing soft music is playing and the servers are paying particular attention to your table. They're checking in and asking how everything is going. Now imagine you couldn't hear a single word clearly from your family or the server because of partial hearing loss. How frustrating would that be? How much are you missing out on? A hearing loss in industrial construction or warehousing industries is common. Many jobs in these industries deal with noisy heavy equipment or tools that can impact hearing over time. Now, OSHA created a standard that outlines specific hearing conservation expectations that an employer must follow. Understanding how your ear works and why noise exposure can be harmful is vital information that can help protect your hearing. Sound travels through your ear canal, causing your eardrum to vibrate. The louder the noise, the more significant the impact. Your eardrum passes the sound waves over to the three bones in your inner ear. Now, these bones amplify the sound to vibrate the cochlea filled with fluid and hair cells. These waves travel through the liquid to activate the hair cells that then translate the sound to your brain. That's how you can hear conversations, music, and everything around you. When exposed to loud or constant noise, you'll begin to damage the hair cells in your cochlea. Now, this damage means that sound can't be transmitted effectively to your brain and you develop hearing loss. Now, while this is pretty technical information, it helps to understand what you're protecting. Now, in this training, we'll define the types of noise exposure, provide industry examples of noise hazards, outline an employer's responsibilities under the hearing conservation standard, and we'll walk through strategies you can use to protect your hearing. You're exposed to noise every day, so what types of noise should be monitored under the hearing conservation standard? Exposure to loud or constant noise increases the possibility of hearing loss. Think about a typical day in a warehouse. Forklifts are moving products, the motors are constantly running and beeping, and other equipment is continuously on. Now, OSHA states that all sound levels from 80 decibels to 130 decibels shall be integrated into noise measurements. Now, any time-weighted noise exposure equivalent to 85 decibels per working day will require hearing protection and a hearing conservation program. To give a frame of reference, being on a busy street or using a blender produces a sound level of about 85 decibels. A forklift consistently operates at 100 decibels, well above the threshold that can cause harm to your inner ear. Now imagine machinery, drilling, and heavy equipment that are often much louder than a forklift. The higher the volume, the greater risk of damage leading to hearing loss. You don't want to be sitting in a restaurant unable to understand the conversation because you work near a forklift or other equipment. However, it's not just the noise level that can cause hearing loss. The type of noise also contributes to the risk. There are three types of noise, each based on timing or duration of exposure. Continuous noise consists of loud sounds that remain constant or consistent over several hours. Now, this type of noise includes equipment, vehicles, or machinery running for long periods of time. This noise exposure is the most common and poses a significant threat to your hearing. Think about your daily work. You may have conveyor belts, tools, and vehicles constantly running in your area. Picture a construction site. Dump trucks, excavators, and other heavy equipment are constantly on the move. How far above the 85 decibel threshold do they range? Now, the answer is nearly double by volume. Even a hammer pounding a nail is in the range to cause significant hearing damage. Understanding these risks will allow you to make better decisions to preserve your hearing. Intermittent noise consists of short, loud burst sounds like a nail gun or drill. Now, these are usually sporadic or inconsistent noise sources. Now, while the sound doesn't continue for hours, it can still pose a risk, especially at loud levels. Now, while most incident cases deal with hearing loss due to continuous noise exposure, there should still be monitoring of noise levels exceeding the threshold. Use of a nail gun might only happen now and then, but often the noise occurs very close to the ear, 
and the shot occurs hundreds of times an hour. Impulsive noise results from a sudden sharp sound. These are short, intense bursts of sound like a siren, riveting, blasting, or even a dog barking. It's quick and it sends a higher frequency to your inner ear, which can cause immediate severe hearing loss. Understanding the type of noise exposure and its risk will help you make good decisions about protecting your hearing. Under OSHA standard 1910.95, all employers for workplaces with noise above the designated threshold must provide a hearing conservation program. Now, this program should include training, hearing protection, audiograms, and annual evaluations to proactively measure any shifts in hearing thresholds. Now, this program should also periodically monitor the workplace for any changes in the type or levels of noise that could pose a risk to employees. Monitoring uses an exposure measurement that includes not only the decibel level of the noise, but also determines whether it is continuous, intermittent, or impulsive. Now, increased or additional monitoring should be conducted when any changes to production, new machinery, or equipment occur. Now, these changes can result in unknown exposure risk or make current hearing protections ineffective. Audiometric testing is a part of any hearing conservation program. A baseline audiogram should be performed to determine the current hearing ability of an employee. An annual audiogram should be provided that can be evaluated against your baseline. Now, this will allow the doctor or other certified professional to analyze the audiogram to determine if there has been any shift in your hearing threshold. Now, this metric determines if the hearing conservation program is adequate or needs to be changed to better protect your hearing. You are entitled to the results of your audiogram. If there are concerns, an employer may recommend a referral for further testing. Annual testing is the minimum requirement, but if you are exposed to a new level or are experiencing hearing impairment, report the symptoms immediately to your supervisor. In addition to monitoring the noise, the employer should provide hearing protectors appropriate to the expected noise exposure. Hearing protectors don't block all the sound. They have a rating based on noise reduction. Earplugs can be placed directly in the canal and come in various materials. Foam earplugs are typical and are single use. Pre-molded earplugs can be made from plastic or silicone. Now, their purpose is to simply reduce sound volume. Canal caps can help create a better seal for earplugs. The connecting band provides gentle force to ensure the earplugs stay in place. Ear muffs cover the entire ear with padded plastic connected with an adjustable headband. These are easy to wear correctly unless you have to wear prescription or safety glasses. Wearing glasses can reduce the seal around the ears that reduces noise exposure. You must also advocate for your own hearing conservation. And while employers provide resources and monitoring, these measures don't work if you're not correctly or consistently using hearing protection. Understanding the purpose and proper use of both earplugs and earmuffs is essential. If inserted incorrectly, earplugs become ineffective. To correctly insert a foam earplug, first roll the earplug until it creates a tube shape that can better fit in your ear canal. Then, pull your ear back, allowing your ear canal to straighten and insert the earplug. Make sure to gently twist the foam earplug until it expands enough that it covers your ear so that there are no gaps the sound can escape through. Wait about 20 to 30 seconds to ensure the earplugs fully expand. When it's time to remove the earplug, gently twist it to break the seal before removing it from the ear canal. To properly insert pre-molded earplugs, first pull your ear back, allowing your ear canal to straighten. Since the earplug is pre-molded, simply rock it back and forth until it's fully inserted. To remove the earplug, rock it back and forth until the seal breaks, enough to safely remove it. To use canal caps, put the band in place so the earplug tips align with your ears. Pull back your ears until the ear canal is straight. Then insert one side at a time by slowly and gently applying pressure until the earplug is fully inserted. Finally, repeat these steps for the other ear. To correctly use earmuffs, grab each earmuff and place it over your ears. Each side should completely cover your ears. You may need to adjust the headband to get a snug fit. 
Understanding the proper use of each type of hearing protector is vital for long-term hearing conservation. Hearing loss can show up in a few ways. A sign of hearing loss is if you're unable to clearly hear or understand words. The impact of loss isn't just missing most of a conversation during a meal. You can place yourself in danger on job sites or the shop floor if you can't fully hear warnings or understand directions. Employers must provide a hearing conservation program and monitor changes in noise types. However, you play a large part in your own hearing conservation. Use hearing protection correctly and during your entire shift.